A lot of people ask me about hydroxyapatite. That's kind of a buzzword amongst uh, dental researchers and people hear the buzzword, it becomes a marketing word, etc. And I wanted to go over what hydroxyapatite is and its importance in dentistry or non-importance. So first, what does hydroxyapatite mean? So hydroxyapatite is essentially bone and tooth material. If you break it down in its two inorganic forms, it's basically calcium, phosphate, um, hydrogen, oxygen, ions, all kind of working together. And it forms a, a eight-sided crystalline form that gives it its, its benefit when it's looked at under a scanning electron microscope. Well, what's the significance of it? Well, you would think if you could put some tooth material in a toothpaste to help clean and maybe help to give back what might be leaching out, it would have benefit. And in theory, it sounds good. Here's where some of that breaks down. So first, let's look at the anatomy of a tooth again. We have the enamel, we have the dentin on the inside, we have the pulp and the root, and it's all housed within a bony structure with gum around it to keep it healthy. Now, if we take a cross section of this dentin, it's actually filled with millions and millions of these little tubules. The tubules are filled with an organic matrix of fluids that's pumped in and out through the pulp. That's why people that end up having root canals, if they have this nerve removed and sealed with a solid type material or a rubberized plastic material, there's no longer flows in and out of the tooth, so it becomes brittle. But what can we do if we still have the nerve or not have the nerve? Are there ways that we might be able to strengthen the teeth or use things that can actually aid in helping the body remineralize the teeth? And there are. But first, looking at the anatomy, if we did a cross-section of the dental tubules, we can see this cross-section. If we look straight down the dental tubules, there's space between them. They're somewhat cylindrical. And this is a scanning electron microscope of just that aspect. So we can see these openings that are here. Now, sometimes when people get tooth decay, you'll see that Many times, let's say they get a cavity down through here. It's not to the nerve yet, but sometimes if you press on it or water gets on it or sweets get on it, they go, oh, I have toothache pain. Or if they get a cavity along the side of their tooth down near the gum, same way if they rub their finger near there or they brush it, they get sensitivity. Or if the gums that are here begin to recede, it exposes part of the non-enamelized part of the tooth, which exposes these dentinal tubules. And the significance of that is because it's filled with solution. If you ever did an experiment at home when you were a kid, you put water in a straw. If you ever touched one side and you touched the other side, you could feel it pulse through there. So what happens is once the cavity gets through the enamel and it communicates with these dentinal tubules, then you have a point here that communicates to the nerve here, and that's why you get the ouch sensitivity or something that lingers kind of painful situation. It means that dental tubule that was closed or sealed by the enamel is now open. The bacteria can get in, it can run down these tubules. If enough bacteria gets into these tubules, then it can infect the nerve, the nerve can die, and then a person can get an abscess down here, which is quite uncomfortable and painful, but it can be prevented if we catch things early. So over here with the hydroxyapatite, the concept is that by brushing and putting hydroxyapatite, it will seal these tubules. And in theory, it should work, but if you're not using a small or nano hydroxyapatite, nano meaning very small size particle, if using a regular size hydroxyapatite, those pieces are about this big in, in scale to the dental tubules. So they might try to lay over, but they're not going to go inside the dentinal tubules. And we want them to go inside the dentinal tubules. So we want to make sure if we get a nano-sized hydroxyapatite, and you want to check, does that toothpaste, um, does that uh, any type of 
a powder or any type of thing you're using, is it a nano form? Does it have enough of the nano form? Is it in a high enough concentration to make sure that it can bring about a result? And what result would that be? Well, theoretically, if they're small enough, which the nano ones can fit easily within these dentinal tubules, they're about maybe a tenth to a twentieth to even a fortieth the size. So they're much smaller. So they just go in like salt and pepper. They fill the area in and then they help each other to hold on, remineralize, and they form their little eight-sided uh, little crystalline formation and they create a bridge over this. So it'd be like putting a little uh, piece of tape over one side of the straw and then you would tap on it and you wouldn't feel anything on the other side. So that's what it does and it begins to then remineralize all the way through to a certain depth here that we still have to discover with further research and development. But that's why in the Great Oral Health toothpaste product we made sure that there's nothing but we have the nanohydroxyapatite forms in there. We also have some of the other hydroxyapatite forms to help seed and hold everything in place. So it's, it works synergistically to bring about this great seeding that will happen. And then what should we see takes place when that happens? Well, we should see a decrease in sensitivity, which we do, and we should see an increase in the body's ability to remineralize that area, which we can see, and we have studies based on the independent studies of the nanohydroxyapatite forms that they're showing that it does lay down a thin layer of remineralized enamel over these areas. The beauty is, it, when it does form, it forms in a white crystalline form. So we actually get a gentle, long-term, slow whitening of the teeth naturally. Although I don't necessarily promote it that way, it's just a side benefit that you'll get with using the uh, nanohydroxyapatite from Great Oral Health. And then also, why did we put the percentages that we put in, as I mentioned earlier, because they work together, some of the larger size, some of the smaller size. So they help fill this area, coat over so we can get maximum seal, so we can get a maximum end result. So. There you go. I hope this helps you understand some of these things and that you can benefit from this as well. Some of the other independent studies shows that people that have really sensitive teeth, they get a vast decrease in sensitivity. Uh, they get a major relief that finally, in a long time, their teeth haven't been that comfortable. And about 80% of the patients really respond well. So I hope you're one of those 80%. Thank you.